Hello everyone, this is the Dr. Madhusudan Rao on the program I teach medical students. My today's lecture is on normal pressure hydrocephalus. It is the most common cause of mental retardation or dementia in the adults and the common cause of hydrocephalus in adults. First described by Hakim in 1964 as normal pressure hydrocephalus, a clinical symptom complex characterized by abnormal gait, incontinence, and dementia. It is associated with progressive gait disturbance, cognitive dysfunction, urinary incontinence, in the presence of brain imaging evidence and CSF findings. Any one of the three symptoms along with the proof of MRI findings and CSO changes is enough to make the diagnosis of NPH. There was a controversy with regard to the terminology of this diagnosis as there is a elevated CSA pressure in some of the cases and uh, the current terminology that has been used for NPH is the idiopathic adult hydro hydrocephalus syndrome. Well, this is a potentially reversible cause of dementia in elderly persons. Most common cause of hydrocephalus in adults, as I told you, it was initially described by a Colombian neurosurgeon, Salman Hakim and uh, R.D. Adams in 1965. Yes, Hakim Adam tired of progressive gait disturbance, cognitive deficiency, and urinary agency and incontinence. So this was earlier described as the Hakim Adam trial of symptomatology. It could be idiopathic or secondary to some of the causes. Okay. Presence with progressive gait abnormality, dementia and urinary incontinence are the other two of the three symptoms. Diagnosis is likely with one of the three symptoms along with the evidence of brain images and CSF findings. Well, in these patients, dementia is treatable with early correction of hydrocephalus with shunt surgery. Current terminology that is used for this condition is idiopathic adult hydrocephalus syndrome. Yes, intracranial pressure is not always normal in these patients. Well, the objectives of uh, present lecture is to continue, I mean, to outline the pathophysiology, to describe the typical clinical presentation, to find out the typical MRI findings, and to outline the treatment modalities. Coming to the etiology, etiologically, it is divided into two types. One is idiopathic, other one is secondary. Okay. Well, in both the conditions, basal CSA pressure is high for some time before the onset of symptoms of NPH. There is no cause is identified in idiopathic type. There could be history of CNS infection, hemorrhage, or trauma in secondary type. Both the conditions, the symptomatology is common with regard to gait disturbance, dementia, and inner incontinence. In both the types, it is associated with the communicative hydrocephalus with normal pressure. Prognostic factors are similar in both the conditions. Only difference is age of onset. 
it is in idiopathic type the patient is bolder than that uh, in the secondary type okay idiopathic type of case in the elderly people that more than 80 years well uh, in uh, secondary type any age group can be affected most most common like as in the younger people coming to the epidemiology male and female females are equally affected between the age group of uh, 65 to 79 years 0.2% of the people are in diagnosed there is 5.6% in the age group of 80 and above okay the average onset of symptoms is about 70 years coming to the pathophysiology the mechanism of the disease is not fully understood okay the basic mechanism is increased lateral pressure on the periventricular vein tissue diminished perfusion resulting in neuronal damage well certain mechanisms are observed in this particular condition there is hyperdynamic flow of csf in the aqueous duct imbalance in the rate of formation and absorption of csf which results in the accumulation of the surplus spinal fluid in the ventricular cavities resulting in the dilatation and pressure effect on the surrounding brain tissue could be the cause for this syndrome increased resistance for csf flow in the subarachnoid space this has been observed and again there is altered metabolism to clear some of the toxic elements present in the csf that results in accumulation of certain protein molecules tau proteins in csf which are injurious to the nerve cells cerebral blood flow is found to be very slow that results in the perfusion defect there is elevated csf pulse pressure these are certain of the mechanisms explained in this particular nph Uh, look at this picture the individual is uh, stands is unstable walking with their short steps and stooping forward this is a patient with normal pressure hydrocephalus and an elderly individual and uh, this picture shows the mechanism that is involved in the development of nph Okay. initially there is disturbance in the csf dynamics which leads to disturbed brain function manifesting as gait disturbance cognitive deficiency and urinary symptoms coming to the clinical presentation according to the international society of hydrocephalus and cerebral spinal fluid disorders they laid down the guidelines according to which normal pressure hydrocephalus is probable when the patient is above 40 years of age presents with progressive gait disturbance for more than 3 to 6 months in the absence of comorbidities which could fully explain the symptoms this is the definition according to the guidelines of international society on hydrocephalus and cerebral spinal fluid disorders coming to gait disturbance this is the most common presentation of the nph the cause of gait disturbance could be explained by the compression of periventricular white matter which contain the corticospinal fibers Okay. That another way the legs. That means 
I mean, corticospinal fibers present in the periventricular white matter are damaged due to the pressure effect of the dilated ventricles, resulting in the gait disturbance. Besides, there is decreased perfusion of periventricular and prefrontal areas. This is very important. And also, there is brain stem compression on pedunculo pontine areas. Okay. Gait disturbance is considered to be the first symptom to appear. At the same time, first symptom to disappear following stem surgery. The patient may come with a shuffling gait, freezing gait, or broad-based gait. This is the progression from a shuffling to broad-based gait. The disturbance is characterized by internal rotation of the foot, number one, poor foot clearance, that is, patient will be shuffling or fascinating gait, difficult to turn. When he tries to turn, he takes multiple steps to make a turning. Difficult to initiate. The patient will be very slow in a, to initiate the gait. This is called freezing gait. Besides gait disturbance, there are other, other motor symptoms. That is a disequilibrium, which is worse when the patient closes his eyes. Stands with broad base and stoops forward. There is a retropulsion, would improve with shunt surgery. Okay. Tremor is not a common finding, but it is seen in 40% of the patients. But shunt surgery is not going to affect the improvement of tremor. In the motor symptom, symptoms, most of the time, lower limbs are affected. Upper limbs are less likely to be affected, except for dyskinesia and tremor. Well, coming to dementia. There is inertia of thought and activity. There is progressive forget forgetfulness and there is a defect in the executive functions. What is the cause for dementia? As there is continuous enlargement of the ventricular cavity, cerebral, cerebral cortex is pushed against the skull bone, resulting in dementia. Coming to urinary symptoms, they are due to detrusal muscle dysfunction. Okay. Characterized by urgency and incontinence. What is the cause? Initially, it is due to traction injury on the corticospinal fibers present in the periventricular area. Okay which innervates the sacral segment of the spinal cord as the upper motor neurons that supply the detrusal muscle. Okay. Injury to these non-fibers results in the dysfunction of the detrusal muscle initially. So it is later compounded by the dementia. Okay. Well, look at this picture. So the individual is normal here, normal individual, it's, uh, the size of the lateral ventricle is normal, third ventricle is normal, and the brain tissue is normal. Whereas in hydrocephalus, there is compression of the brain tissue, okay, due to the buildup of the spinal fluid in the ventricles. There is enlarging ventricular system, putting pressure over the brain tissue. This picture shows the shunt surgery that is uh, done on the patient with NPH. Now 
Now to repeat, normal pressure hydrocephalus is a term applied to the trial of dementia, disturbance and urinary incontinence occurring in association with hydrocephalus and normal CSO pressure. Described in two types with preceding cause of uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage, meningitis, trauma, or radiation, etc., and without known cause in idiopathic type. Coming to the diagnosis and treatment, early diagnosis results in better prognosis. You can go for CT brain, but CT brain may show some changes in the brain, but not enough to fully evaluate and behave. MRI is the better option, okay? It can identify the vital matter changes. It can assess the CSA pressures, okay? So MRI scan is always indicated in a patient with NPH. What are the unfavorable effects, factors in NPH? Severe dementia, number one. Dementia as the presenting symptom, number two. And multiple, multiple white matter lesions and cerebral atrophy in MRI. These are the unfavorable effects in a patient with NPH. So, it is always important to have early diagnosis and treatment to have a better prognosis. Ventricular peritoneal shunts are commonly done for the, for the patients with MEH. Okay. And there is a CSF drain, CSF drain test, which includes 50 to 70 ml of fluid is removed daily for two to three days, or he can be put into continuous drainage at a rate of 150 to 250 ml per day for two days. And there could be improvement, improvement with regard to the symptoms of NPH. So this is a very sensitive test that can be carried out as a diagnostic evaluation, but it is an invis invisible procedure. Well, this is the brief talk on uh, the normal pressure hydrocephalus. Uh, hope you could, could like this particular video. And if you like my video, please subscribe to my channel to produce some more videos. And thank you very much. Until that time, we we'll see you later with the next class. Thank you all once again.